Welcome back to Hover Unbox. Today we're taking yet another look at Windows 11 versus Windows 10 performance, but this time I'll be doing so using AMD Ryzen processors. Now recently I did this with Intel's 10th and 11th Gen Core series processors, but I refrained from testing any AMD parts due to the known L3 cache latency performance issues. As I was editing that content, AMD in partnership with Microsoft released the fix consisting of a Windows 11 update along with a new chipset driver from AMD. Now, many of you were extremely keen to see a part two centered around AMD's Ryzen CPUs. So here we are, and I'll be using the Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 9 5950X. Once again, helping make this possible is Team Group, who sent over a pair of their eight terabyte MP34Q M.2 NVMe SSDs. And yeah, these tiny SSDs offer eight terabytes of high speed storage. And I've got one for a fresh install of Windows 10 and one for a fresh install of Windows 11. And this allowed me to go back and forth to double check and even in some instances, triple check results. These drives offer great read throughput of up to 3.4 gigabytes per second with writes as fast as three gigabytes per second. And I'll be including some SSD results towards the end of the video. Now, as noted earlier, I'll be testing with the Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 9 5950X, both of which were installed on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard using BIOS version 3801. Then for the memory, I've gone with Crucial's Ballistics DDR4 3200CL16 kit, and for the graphics card, the MSI GeForce RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio. There are five test configurations in total, three with the 5950X and then two with the R5 3600. The Ryzen 5 3600 comparison is pretty straightforward. It compares Windows 10 with Windows 11, and of course it does feature the L3 cache latency fix. Then with the 5950X, we're comparing Windows 10 to two Windows 11 configurations, one with the L3 fix and then one without. As for the testing itself, we're gonna look at application, gaming, storage, and even load time performance. All results are based on a three run average, and in some instances, I actually powered down the entire system between runs to avoid any cached results. Okay, let's get into the graphs. Starting with A to 64 cache and memory results, we saw no difference between the various configurations when comparing DRAM latency, L1 cache latency, and L2 cache latency. However, here you can see just how bad the L3 latency was prior to the fix, with the 5950X's L3 latency pushed out to 36 nanoseconds, which is roughly three times greater than what it should be. Thankfully though, AMD and Microsoft have now addressed that issue, and therefore Windows 10 and 11 should be comparable in that respect. Moving on to Cinebench R23, we find some pretty boring results here, though not entirely unexpected. Basically, it really doesn't matter which version of Windows you use, performance here is gonna be much the same, and this was even true prior to the L3 cache latency fix. And it's much the same with the Blender Open Data Benchmark, especially when looking at the Ryzen 9 5950X, which saw no more than a percent deviation in performance. The R5 3600 was also very similar, though we did see a 3% improvement with Windows 11, which I'd still argue is quite insignificant. Moving on to the 7-zip file manager results, we find 4D compression work. There's very little difference between the two operating systems, as we're only talking about a 1% variation, which is within the margin of error. That said, the compression results are quite interesting as here the Ryzen 9 5950X did suffer a 7% performance loss due to the L3 bug, which of course has now been addressed and with the fix Windows 11 and Windows 10 were much the same. Testing with Adobe Photoshop 2021 sees a 5% performance improvement for the R5 3600 when using Windows 11, which was interesting to see, especially given there was no performance improvement with the 5950X. Then with Adobe After Effects 2021, we're looking at a 2% improvement with Windows 11 for both CPU configurations, while the L3 cache bug did reduce performance by 4%. So not really a big impact there, but it was consistently slower in our testing. Then the last application benchmark I ran was Adobe Premiere Pro 2021, and this time the Ryzen 5 3600 delivered virtually identical results using either operating system, while the 5950X scored 4% higher with Windows 10. Moving on to some gaming benchmarks, and we'll start with F1 2021, which saw the same performance across all tested configurations with the 5950X. Even the L3 cache bug wasn't causing a drop in performance here. The R5 3600 was on average 3% fast when running Windows 11, but that really is a negligible difference. Now, these results really are quite interesting. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege was repeatedly faster 
when using Windows 11, and this applied to both processors, though it was more pronounced with Zen 3. Interestingly, the L3 bug saw Windows 11 perform much like Windows 10, but with the bug addressed, Windows 11 was now consistently offering 5% more performance. That said, we only saw a 3% improvement with the R5 3600, but again, Windows 11 was consistently faster by a small margin. The Ryzen 9 5950X was also found to be fast when running Windows 11, again, boosting performance by 5%, while the R5 3600 was also faster using the newer operating system, though here the margin was only 2%. The Cyberpunk 2077 results are also very similar to what we've just seen in Rainbow Six Siege and Watch Dogs Legion. Windows 11 offered a 5% performance boost with the 5950X, but just a 2% boost with the R5 3600. Now, when it comes to game load times, or rather level load times, just as I found with the Intel CPUs, Windows 11 does nothing to cut down on those wait times. At most in this testing, we're looking at a one second difference in either direction, so you certainly wouldn't notice any improvement here. The Windows load time results are pretty interesting. The Ryzen 5 3600 took 11 seconds to load Windows regardless of the version used, but the 5950X on the other hand, that was blistering fast with Windows 10, taking just six seconds to hit the desktop from the boot select menu in the BIOS. Windows 11 on the other hand, that took 12 seconds and it seemed to take a lot longer to pass the final load screen. And these results are in line with what we found when testing with the Intel CPUs. But of course, these results will vary depending on your hardware configuration. Finally, we have the crystal disk mark results, and when it comes to sequential throughput, Windows 11 offers no performance advantage over Windows 10. However, just as I discovered when testing with the Intel CPUs, Windows 11 does appear to greatly improve random read and write performance. With the 5950X, we were looking at almost a 70% increase in write performance and over a 20% increase in read throughput. And again, that lines up with what we saw when testing the Intel CPUs. Big gains were also seen when using the Ryzen 5 3600 as write performance was boosted by 44% and read performance by 30%. I have to admit I wasn't convinced by these gains seen when testing the Intel CPUs, just wasn't convinced they were accurate, but having seen the same thing on a completely different platform with different installs of both operating systems, I'm now convinced that the data is accurate. Well, those results were a bit more interesting than what I found when testing Intel's 10th and 11th gen core series, which really for the most part saw no performance difference between Windows 11 and 10 for application and gaming benchmarks. If anything, Windows 10 was slightly faster for gaming, but we are talking about just a few percent difference, which is obviously negligible. With Ryzen, it's also true that for the most part, there is very little difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11, especially when looking at application performance. For games though, it can vary from absolutely no difference, like what was seen in F1 2021, to around a two to 5% uplift with Windows 11. The Ryzen 9 5950X was often around 5% faster using the newer operating system. And while that's a trivial difference for gamers, it's less trivial for product reviews. On that note, initially I had planned to take the easy route, let's say, when it came to my upcoming Elder Lake reviews, and that was to reuse the Windows 10 data that I already had for the AMD Ryzen processors, along with Intel's 10th and 11th gen processors. After all, us reviewers only have a very limited amount of time to prepare that content, and the thought of cramming the 12th gen testing into a week along with all the other CPUs wasn't a fun thought. But with Windows 11 consistently providing better gaming performance for Ryzen, based on the games used here for testing, even if it is only in the range of 2-5%, to the more I grappled with the dilemma of what to do, the more it became apparent that I was just best off throwing out all the old data and starting over. So that's exactly what I've done, and not just for the games, but for everything. So for our Elder Lake content, all CPUs will be tested using the latest version of Windows 11 with all updates applied, but VBS will be disabled. All motherboard biases will be updated to the latest version, and I've switched from the RTX 2080 Ti for the application testing and the RTX 3090 for the gaming benchmarks to the Radeon RX 6900 XT, which has been used exclusively for all testing. So that is where I'm at right now. Still loads of benchmarking to go before you'll see our first Elder Lake CPU review in two days time and there will be an avalanche of content to follow. So do make sure you subscribe for that. Also, if you like this video, 
you know what to do. And if you would like to become a Harbour Unbox community member, then we have Float Plan and Patreon. The links for those are in the video description. You get access to our exclusive Discord chat where you can chat with Tim and myself and the rest of the awesome Harbour Unbox community. We also do a live stream, so Tim and I get together and a live we address your questions and just talk about whatever's been going on for the month, behind the scenes content, and what else, Q&As. So some cool stuff there if you're interested, if not perfectly fine, and I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.